torej smo na prestolnici evropske, oziroma evropski prestolnici kulture. Tole je del projekta 12 in Boris Grojs, ki je z mano, je prvi med dvanajstimi, kot je bilo hrekel, profesor estetike, profesor umetnosti vdovine medijske teorije v Ameriki in Nemči, avtor mnogih knjig, nekatere so provedene tudi v Slovenščino, uvod v antifilozofijo je šel pred enim letom, v te dni je išla sumljivost, eno izbred njegovih najbolj znanih del, tudi verjetno najbolj odmevnih, je bilo ta celostna umetnina Stalin. Nedavno je izdal tudi, no, nedavno, pred neki leti, je izdal odmevno knjigo Komunistični postscript, Communist postscript, če ni prevedeno v Slovenčino, pa bilo dobro, da je bila. Tako da to je to. Are you in character? Ok, let's go into character. All around the world, people are protesting. There are protests against capitalism. Why this global protest against capitalism is not working? First of all, we don't know if it's working or not. Yeah, it's not quite clear. Yeah, we are at the beginning of the process. Uh, but at least one thing uh, became clear, I believe. You know, if you describe, if we describe, or there's a tradition to describe capitalism as a system. Yeah, so people say, I am against the system. Yeah. I won't change. Yeah, uh, I'm against empire. I'm against bureaucracy, I'm against this, I'm against that, then it may be misdirected because actually capitalism is a flow yeah. and capitalism is change. So capitalism does not operate by a system, it operates by, by flows and changes. You know, we are trained also by French philosophy uh, to be against the system and structure, a B4 flows. Mm -hmm. flows of desire, flows of change. But it's precisely how capitalism operates by money flows, yeah, and flows of desires, mm. consumption desires. So uh, it seems to me that uh, we are at the beginning of the process of formulating an alternative uh, to a capitalism that shows itself different as we uh, were trained for a long time mm. to think about it. Yeah, but uh, it probably got to do a lot with uh, that uh, we cannot discuss with economic processes. They are mute, anonymous, wordless, speechless. Like we cannot change their mind, convince them, pursue them, argue with them. Yes, it is a real situation of our time. Uh, which is also has to do with a uh, certain kind of disbalance between economic power and political power. Yeah? Because economic powers are operating on the international and global level, and there is no uh, institution, political institution, cultural institution, that would operate on the uh, global level. Yeah? So, uh, people speaking a lot about globalization of information flows. But they are speaking about American corporations like Google or uh, yeah. Facebook and so on and so on. They're speaking about uh, international globalized art, but there's no one a global international art institution, like for example, museums. Uh, something like a global museum doesn't exist. Yeah? Mm. So if we um, uh, look realistically at our uh, contemporary situation, then we see that only markets uh, uh, operate globally and culture and politics operate locally. And I think that is a disbalance that makes that mute. Yeah, we don't have this kind of global perspective uh, at our disposal, even rhetorically. Yeah, we don't have something like a language of um, political globalism. And uh, I, I think we are, we, are, we are really at the beginning of developing a process uh, of expansion of culture and politics globally. It's something that was started by Karl Marx with the concept of international. Yeah. Yeah? He saw that already at that moment. Uh, but this concept and this project uh, never succeeded, still now. 
mm, yeah. to help you a little bit. Uh, which is the language of capitalism? In which language should we address or must we address capitalism? At the is moment, it English? Like it was the Russian was a language of communism? At the moment we, uh, we don't know uh, language at all, yeah? Because money are mute, as you said, and uh, language operates actually uh, as a kind of commodity. So uh, to speak today, uh, means to produce a commodity, for example, uh, a talk, yeah, what we're doing now, that can be then uh, distributed yeah, mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. chains of communication and uh, to consume mm -hmm. yeah, this product. So everything that happens also in language and culture has a, f uh, um, has a form of commodity. Yeah? And that is, uh, but I think the reason for that is what I said before. It's because there's no institution we can refer to as being global. Yeah? Uh, we, we had for a certain period global communism. At the time we had global communism, we had a certain, uh, let's say, opposition to global capitalism. So we could discuss the global politics in terms of opposition between uh, two blocks. And if we refer to this opposition, we could develop something like a universalized language of political appreciation, description, and also commitment, yeah, political yeah. commitment. But we simply do not have, at the moment, any global cultural political institution we could refer to as being representative in any uh, available sense. Yeah. But that's the problem. In capitalism, power and critique of power don't operate in the same medium, obviously. Yeah, that's what I also formulate yeah, in, in, uh, in, um, in communist postscript, that in a certain way, uh, socialism is uh, a social structure or a political structure, that allows us to discuss everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, Alexander Kozhev, uh, before the World War II, said that the goal of European philosophy beginning uh, with Socrates and, and Plata was to develop a society in which everything can be discussed, mm -hmm. yeah, every decision. And the socialism was uh, such a society uh, because um, everything uh, was discussed and there's a certain a decision were taken. Yes, yeah, it's a decision were not subjected to any uh, uh, power of, uh, of the markets, yeah, mm -hmm. to any objective yeah, or yeah, nature of powers. Yeah, yeah but purely decision by certain authorities, yeah, yeah. because they were, uh, they came to the opinion that that is a good decision. So we had this language, but we had this language only because we had these authorities. Yeah. We had these authorities we could appeal to, we could uh, criticize, mm -hmm. we could hate. Yeah? You, 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 you can hate an authority that decides your life, but you cannot hate capitalism. Yeah? You can yeah. be against capitalism, but you can't hate capitalism because capitalism it doesn't say, I took this decision. Yeah. Yeah? Capitalism says it happened because it is unavoidable, and because life is like that, yeah. And, you know, as uh, Rumsfeld was asked why Iraq campaign um, uh, was so unsuccessful, he simply said, stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah? And this stuff happens. Like shit happens. Yeah, shit happens. Yeah. And that is that's the only answer we get to whatever question we put yeah. to the so, power. Yeah. So, so in capitalism, basically, we can only hope that something will come out uh, of that Hegelian dialectic of master and slave. You know, slave with his work is changing the world of master, so master is slowly becoming prisoner uh, of the world that slave is making. Yeah, but this, there's, this is but there's the no hope. master. Yeah, but there's no master. Everybody, you know, masters and slaves are uh, enslaved to capital. Capital is the only master. Capital, capital flows, financial flows are the only master. And it actually coincides with death, yeah? Because 
you know, Hegel actually says that the end of his analysis of French Revolution, that our modern only master is death, death itself. And uh, capitalism is actually operating by death. What does it mean? It means that everything flows. Everything is mortal, everything is final, nothing is stable, nothing is immortal, nothing can survive the change. Yeah? So, yeah, then the capitalism functions as avant-garde. Uh, as destruction, uh, as, yeah, as a actually a revolutionary getting, power. Get, of getting rid of everything old. Absolutely. It's a revolutionary power. Yeah. So, um, uh, socialism was a counter-revolution, and to find a opposition to capitalism means to be counter-revolutionary. We, we have to be counter-revolutionary. What does it mean to be counter-revolutionary? It means to establish something like an immortal authority, and global authority, it was God in the medieval age mm -hmm. before capitalism started. So we have to go, uh, you know, in any case, whatever happens, yeah, we go back to feudalism. Yeah, it's, uh, I, think, I think it's obvious, yeah. Uh, simply because um, uh, the gap between a poor and, uh, and rich uh, is widening all the time. And that means that these uh, democratic uh, liberal institutions of uh, secular modernity collapse in the observable future. So we will have very rich and very rich controlling life of poor and very poor. Yeah? And that was a time where big counter-revolution began at the beginning of the feudal society of the uh, Middle Age yeah? uh, with an attempt to curb uh, this flows of money, mm -hmm. yeah, after the, mm -hmm. the end of the Roman Empire, uh, and to curb the consumption, yeah, new asceticism, yeah. new immobility, and new stagnation. What we have to do is to love stagnation, yeah, to practice stagnation, end of growth, end of dynamics, anti-revolutionary, counter-revolutionary, new Middle Ages. We, we go to the Middle Ages anyway. Yeah? So, yeah, this way or that way. So the, the, the only question is what kind of Middle Ages we get. Yeah, this way or highway. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, so, uh, if we want to have possibility of arguing, protesting, agitating against capitalism, against our faith, uh, if we want our protest and critic uh, to work and be heard, if we want change, so to speak, we must turn society into communism. Because in, uh, as you said, that for society to become subject to criticism, it must first become communist. Because with communism, you can argue, you can pursue it, uh, yeah, yeah, the well, communism to change. Yeah, we have to, uh, I think that communism is a better version of Middle Ages. It's actually a kind of medieval society. And I think it's a better uh, case of medieval society as a medieval society that we are going heading to. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, because also Catholic Church was a place where you could argue. You could argue also against God for devil, for example. Yeah, yeah? You, you could you, like you, devil, for example. Yeah? You, you, can be, you could be dissident. Yeah? Yeah. What is dissident? In, if you like devil. Yeah? In capitalism, no, no, no God. No, no God. God, but no devil too. Yeah? Everybody is kind of average. Yeah? That doesn't work. Yeah? And that doesn't work for cultures. That doesn't work for the intellectuals. Yeah, you, you, in communist postscript, uh, you, write, uh, you wrote about uh, the uh, linguistification. Yeah. Of uh, this is Versprachlingung or yeah. linguistification. Uh, yeah, that, that, I think that com communism is stagnation, and we really need stagnation. Yeah, we need uh, we need slow down yeah, these dynamics of permanent change, and to begin to reflect and be, uh, and begin to argue, yeah, and begin to, um, and, and get the, uh, the possibility again to be dissidents. Yeah, the problem yeah. of uh, yeah, yeah, we are, we are uh, raised in a culture of dissidence. Yeah, the culture of enlightenment yeah, yeah. is a culture of dissidence. It's the culture of dissidence that developed itself under the regime of absolutist monarchies. Yeah, so we have to get it back uh, to be dissident uh, again.
Yeah? Because you can't be a dissident in a capitalist society. There is no authority you can argue against. Yeah? You are only involved in, yeah. this, uh, in, in this process of exchange. Yeah, you permanently exchange your language and your artistic practice for I don't know what, not even money. Yeah, because uh, at the moment you have this development of digital world, development of the internet, and going to the internet you don't even get money for what you are doing and what you are investing into it. Yeah, there's no copyright uh, and so on and so on. So we actually go under capitalist regime, we go into the period of proletarization of intellectual and artistic mm -hmm. work. Yeah? So if, you, uh, if we argue Marxist, uh, in the Marxist terms, yeah, we had a process of industrialization uh, of manual work at the end of 9th century, beginning of 20th century, and now we have a second wave of proletarization of work, yeah. that is proletarization of uh, a mental work, so to say, and we go to the condition that the whole culture of the world would be completely proletarized, uh, that uh, surplus value uh, will be uh, actually acquired and appropriated uh, by big companies like Google, like uh, Apple, like Facebook, and so on and so on. Because all these millions of people, what they are doing, they're sitting every day on their computers, yeah, many, many hours, and then produce surplus value, but they don't get anything uh, back. Yeah, they're only giving, 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 giving. Yeah. So what happens with this invested work, yeah, with these hours, yeah, that invest in you, they uh, are appropriated a surplus value uh, by big digital corporations. So we are, we, we are going now to the new phase of capitalism where artists and intellectuals uh, become uh, proletarians of the new age. And because we are all proletarians, we are not bourgeois anymore, it was a classical uh, period of time, uh, capitalism described by Marx. Mm, I would say all these, you know, proletarian dreams, yeah, moving from working class, many yeah. working class, to the new working class, which is intellectuals and artists. But when you're speaking about uh, classes and proletarization, uh, for communism, in order to succeed, it must become capitalist. But for capitalism, in order to become subject of critique and protest, it must become communism. So you're saying the place of communism is in capitalism. The place of communism, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> the point is we are already there, yeah? Look what happens at the internet. The internet is a space of communism inside capitalism. No. Uh, yeah? And it, it's not a good relation. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, you, you, yeah, you are working and you're getting nothing because you're in the capitalism, yeah? yeah? <laughs> but other people getting everything because they're in the capitalism. So it's, it's not, not a good disposition. It's yeah. better to change that and to put capitalism inside communism. But to put capitalism inside communism is only possible on the basis of the new international. So on the basis of the project of political globalization or cultural globalization, uh, that would be, that could compete uh, with uh, capitalist globalization. And we don't have it now. We simply don't have it, yeah? It's simply as a matter of fact. Yeah. But let's go back to the place of communism is in capitalism. Uh, that means that now communism is free for repetition because in capitalism yeah. everything can be reproduced Infinitely. Yes, of course. Yeah. Communism is free for repetition, uh, as everything is free for repetition. Yeah? Yeah. But, but yeah. Our, our society is a society of repetition and reproduction. Religion can be repeated, capitalism repeats itself, yeah, it reproduces itself. Communism can be also reproduced and is reproduced, as I try to argue uh, in the digital, in the internet milieu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we have is a reproduction of communism. So. All these processes are already happening. The only 
question is in what proportions, what kind of disposition, what kind of topology, social, political, economic topology. But uh, we were laughing years ago at uh, Francis Fukuyama and his thesis about last man and the end of history. But we are at the end of history, everything is right, we all attain state of representative democracy and the free market capitalism, nothing big can happen now. That was his thesis. But in a way, he was right. We are rebuilding financial system that brought us into this crisis. We are rebuilding status quo ante, like there is mm -hmm. no alternative. We are living in the end of history. So Francis Fukuyama, <laughs> in a way, in a funny way, he was right. I'm not very sure about that because, you know, if you look at uh, art as an uh, example, art is uh, yeah. always a good model, yeah. So the so-called creation uh, doesn't make sense today, yeah. So you don't create in yeah. art, yeah. But you're operating with contexts and you're operating with topologies and you're operating with places. So you do allegedly the same, but under different conditions, under different disposition, in different contexts. Yeah? Uh, since Duchamp, uh, we don't produce anything new, but uh, well, I can take a uh, urinoir, yeah? Yeah. Uh, but to take this urinoir as an uh, artwork, we have to move it from one disposition to another disposition, and that is also a very important gesture. So, of course, we do reproduce, but we do reproduce this and not that. Yeah? in this context and not that context. It's always a decision. Yeah, you, 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 you can take a decision to reproduce this, for example, religion and tradition and this and that. You can take a decision to reproduce communism. You can take a decision to reproduce capitalism. It, it is a kind of space of decision. But it is a space of decision that at the moment is not articulated as such. Because if you said, say that we reconstruct um, pre-financial crisis situation, it's correct, of course, yeah. But we don't do that because we decided to do that, yeah. There's no uh, space for this kind of decision. Yeah, it's not like, for example, I, I don't know, the so population of Slovenia was asked um, this question if they want to yeah. reconstruct yeah. the situation yeah. before financial crisis to get this financial crisis again. Yeah. Yeah? Because, of course, you reconstruct that to get it again. So if it would be formulated in this way, I don't know what kind of answer people would get for that. Uh, you studied mathematics as a young man. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me, you know this controversy now, 1% against 99%. Yeah. So how <laughs> come that those who are just 1% are living and behaving like they're in majority. I mean, is this a capitalism in, in communism? Uh, well, first of all, why, why is this 99% or 1%, yeah? So why this change, yeah, before it was not the case before? It's because of this proletarization of uh, mental work uh, I was speaking about, yeah, so the middle class that was in uh, mental intellectual production goes yeah. Yeah, down, yeah, goes down because this process of prioritization uh, undermines its position in society, also economic position in society, yeah, and so this whole huge middle uh, class goes down and goes down very fast, yeah? At the same time, people operating with the financial flows and financial markets going up, yeah? And they're going up also very fast. And that's why this gap is growing all the time. So they are in the majority because they do what the system asks them to do, yeah? We, we, we should realize that this 99% simply don't do what the system asks them to do, yeah? The system asks people to manipulate and speculate on the stock exchange. Yeah, that, that is what system actually ask us to do. Mm. That is what is the right thing to do. Everybody who does not, do, um, uh, who is avoids this answer, positive answer, and does something different, 
That's a wrong thing. Yeah, and he's punished for that. Yeah. So 99% 90, of the population simply don't do the right thing, they are punished for that. And 1% does the right thing and is rewarded for that. That's how the system is working. Yeah. Uh, speaking about punishment, about capitalism that is eternal like church. And there is interesting parallel between capitalism and religion. Religion is surviving and is socially relevant precisely because it's irrational, mystical, incomprehensible, inimaginable. And capitalism is surviving exactly because it's irrational, mystical, incompre incom incom incomprehensible, unimaginable uh, because of its uh, exotic financial products, which are exactly that. They are irrational, mystical. Nobody understands them. Yeah, that's true. But if you speak about religion, I think we have to be more precise. We speak about religion now, yeah, in the terms that you proposed. You can, we can describe the religions before the advent of Christianity, yeah. and before Buddhism, and before classical Judaism, uh, paganistic religions that believed into faith, mm -hmm. yeah, irrational faith. Yeah. So we are back in the classic ancient Greece, back in the um, Hinduistic religions uh, before Buddhism, back in the Roman Empire. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then you have a kind of um, first form of communism, that Christianity, Buddhism, and so on. So, on. so you, you have the Christ coming and saying, and now I tell you what the will of the faith is. Yeah. So, uh, true religion, our religion, our Christian tradition, begins with announcement of what God actually will. It's a very problematic thing. Yeah? <laughs> As you know, uh, philosophers of the old Greece, as they listened to that, were very skeptical about yeah. that. But it had an immense political and social success. Yeah? And we actually live after this success and the shadow of this success. Also, communism lives in the shadow of this success because Marx also repeats the same gesture. And now I tell you what the capitalist fate actually is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I come to you and tell you that. Yeah? It's a repetition of this fundamental Christian gesture, Buddhistic gesture, a uh, gesture of the Jewish prophets. And mm -hmm. now I tell you what this faith actually is and will be. So you have these two attitudes, very fundamental attitudes. You can believe in something ir irrational, that, that our society believes in capitalism as irrational, as you say. Only you can believe in, 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 in um, uh, God's announcement uh, that uh, opens to us the truth of the world, yeah. Um, you know, Kierkegaard discussed this question and he said it's, it's a risk taking, yeah. We can accept that or reject that. But uh, I think it's very important to look at the uh, options, yeah. So if you reject that, you can't argue. Mm. But at the moment you reject this opening, you can't argue anymore, yeah. You're subjected to this uh, power of contingency. Um, and the power of accidental uh, and irrational. If you accept that, you can't begin to argue. So if you accept Marxism, you can't begin to argue. That's why Marxists argue all the time. Yeah. Yeah? If you reject Marxism, you can't argue. You can't only say life is life. Yeah? But wouldn't you say that, uh, that this financial capitalism is winning exactly because it's even more irrational and more mystical than religion? Yes, yes, only because of that. That's, that's the winning formula for... Yeah, it, 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 is, a, it is a return, uh, it's conscious return uh, to the uh, pre-Christian uh, religious forms. Yeah? And, and of course, if you look at the uh, uh, French Revolution, the beginning of the capitalism, yeah. bourgeois society, uh, what were the 
did uh, the whole mise en scene of French Revolution was a return to Greece, return to Roman Empire, return mm -hmm. to virtue, return to sacrifice, return to this, to return to that. Yeah. So return to the power of irrational, return to the power of death. Yeah. Uh, but again, this return is not final. Yeah. I don't believe that uh, we, des we decided, because nobody decided, that we decided now to believe that life is only irrational, yeah. Yeah, and there is no explanation, yeah? there's no will, and there's no possibility to find any explanation for life. It's, it's, it looks very plausible, yeah. but, but, but we can go also in different directions. Yeah, but, uh, uh, the this decision decision for uh, ir irrationality was in this case completely totally rational because they invented all those mystical financial products so that no one can understand what is going on yes but i do not know i i don't believe that people invented that um i think i think it's not quite quite the case, yeah? because if you look at the development of classical development of capitalism, it was not so irrational as we describe it now. Yeah. I come back to the same point yeah, I made at the beginning. So development of capitalism took place inside the absolutist uh, centralized states in Europe. So capitalism was initially national capitalism, it was French capitalism, mm -hmm. English capitalism and so on and so on. As such, this capitalism was regulated by certain norms of society that actually uh, dominated it. Yeah? Uh, still, if you read Foucault, if you read Derrida, if you read Deleuze, you have uh, as a reference point this concept of French state, French capitalist bourgeois state that regulates French mm -hmm. capitalism yeah, in a certain way. So the breaking out of capitalism out of these norms and spreading all around the globe that created this kind of irrationality. Mm. Originally, um, a capitalism uh, was an invention of the centralized state. It was not irrational at all. It was regulated by the state bureaucracy. At a certain, in, in, in a certain way, it's still the case. Yeah? Uh, it's still the case partially in the USA, it's still the case partially in China. Yeah? Uh, but indeed, I agree with that, at the moment um, that capitalism begins to trans transcend the borders of the national state, and the national state remains local, yeah, then capitalism begins to operate inside a, a space outside of law, outside of control, outside of posi uh, political decision making, outside of uh, general uh, universal cultural space. And operating in this kind of uh, no man land, it of course takes on this kind of fateful irrational qualities. It is not originally original capitalism. It's today's capitalism. I think it mutated uh, quite a lot yeah, uh, recently. Yeah, but if you think about Walter Benjamin and his capitalism as a religion, religion yeah. uh, we can see one thing. Uh, that uh, you can never pay your debt to God in religion the same way you can never pay your debt in capitalism. Capitalism yeah. and religion here are functioning the same way. Yeah, of course, but you can't force, for example, to reject and not to pay your debt at all. Yeah, What Greece actually is doing yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we should not take all that very seriously. Yeah. Yeah? People never pay the debt, yeah? And for example, if you read the Sad and not uh, Benjamin, yeah? you have a, com a completely different perspective of having debts, making debts, and paying debts. So, so uh, we should not take, take all that stuff very seriously. It, it's an option, it's but one option among many others. Be, but, but in a way, yes, because we started this uh, discussion why the protest is not working. It's hard to protest, it's, got, it's hard to fight something that is religion. 
if capitalism is religion, then capitalism is hard to find to to fight. It's unbeatable in a way. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, first of all, as I try to argue, there are different kinds of religion, mm. and uh, uh, historically, uh, Christianity, Buddhism, uh, were very successful mm. in the fight against pagan religions of irrationality. Yeah. Mm. So we have a good example that this kind of rational religiosity can win. And also, uh, we should not undervalue a possibility of expansion that also happens in some way. Expansion of culture and political institution all around the world. Yeah? Mm. This expansion goes maybe slow, much slower than expansion of the market, but it is possible that this expansion at a certain point in time will be as vital, as efficient as capitalism. And then you have a completely different disposition. So you have political authorities, organization, agency, and so on and so on, that take decision in the, uh, on the world scale. Um, you have a different uh, configuration of what we are speaking about. And then the possibility of enlightenment. Possibility of enlightenment, what, is, what was the possibility of enlightenment in France? Yeah, I'm speaking mm. against religion. Yeah. It was the establishment of the French centralized state. Yeah? All these enlighteners, they came from the court, mm. yeah? uh, from the king's court. So if you establish some, something like a political sovereignty on the global scale, then you have also the politics of enlightenment so politics of rationality, mm -hmm. that would be efficient enough. And for example, if you speak about capitalism in communism, communism, capitalism, then let us look at the World Bank and this kind of institution. Or, or, we, can look, or we can look at George Orwell's uh, 1984 uh, and his big brother. Uh, it was originally functioning as a critique of Soviet Union, but... Yeah. Uh, slowly, through years, uh, it became critique of capitalism. It became a critique of capitalism understood as a system of control. But uh, capitalism is not a system of control. Capitalism is a flow of money that escapes any control. And if you follow, for example, uh, political uh, controversies, in America, yeah. Yeah? and not here in Europe. Because Europe is still kind of things in terms of French philosophy, yeah, or yeah, okay, things yeah, yeah. like that. But if you go in, in, into American uh, elections, then you have quite clear opposition. You have Santorum and Republicans arguing in terms of Foucault and Derrida and Deleuze. Yeah. Yeah? speaking about free flows of information, free flows of desire, free flows of consumption, uh, reducing the power of state, reducing the power of control, liberating people, yeah, liberating people from the oppression through education. If you, for example, listen to Santorum, it's like, like what, what people uh, read in Foucault. Yeah. Yeah, on the one hand, and the other hand, other hand uh, Democrats actually um, speaking about uh, controlling state, uh, containment of capitalism and so on and so on. So we have completely different disposition. Yeah? Here in Europe, people think that, still think that is not being on the left is to be against authority. Being for authority is on the left. Yeah? Being against authority is on the right. Yeah? It's what Republicans mm. want. Yeah? The whole posi uh, political disposition completely changed in the meantime. Yeah? We have a completely different topology. And uh, what I want to say is that World Bank and all these institutions are actually socialist institutions. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Why they are socialist institutions and not capitalist institutions? Because they take decisions in terms of politics. Yeah, in terms of economy, the real decision would be let them crash, yeah? Yeah. let them default. Yeah? That would be a reasonable decision yeah? in terms of financial uh, rationality, 
yeah. irrationality. Yeah? And like, like also Romney says, okay, let American industry collapse here. Yeah, that's a good thing for America. You know? So that uh, governments avoid that, invest money, World Bank avoids that, invest money. It's a socialist politics. It, it, it's a socialist politics because it's a politics that is based not on the ra uh, rational financial rationality, but on the some abstract idea of the common welfare, no. but wouldn't we, which is completely socialist, basically. But wouldn't you say that uh, uh, capitalism is doing communist things like surveillance better than communists? No, 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 no. no I don't so think so. Capitalism is is is. It's not better communist than communists. No, not at all. Yeah, not at all. No, no, no. Uh, World Bank maybe is a good communist, but World Bank uh, begins to act against uh, logic of capitalism. Logic of capitalism, logic of irrationality that never ever comes to any rational order. If you want to have a rational order, you have to impose it. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't emerge automatically. The absolute deception people living in is that, uh, you know, rational order can originate out of nowhere. Yeah, you have a rational, 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 and something, yeah. it becomes, by some fear, it becomes rational. It, things like that never happen. Yeah? If you are irrational now, you will be irrational forever. So if you want to be rational, you have to formulate this rational order and you have to impose it. Yeah, that's only one solution. Yeah, but then again, uh, who says that uh, Orwell's 1940-84 was not originally conceived as critique of capitalism? Yeah, because it's critique of surveillance and critique of control. And critique of surveillance and critique of control is critique not of capitalism, but critique of socialism. It was, uh, and, and it remains. Yeah, and uh, Republicans in America says we are not, a, uh, we are against control. Yeah, that is a logical position. I mean, position of Republicans and Tea Party is logical position. It's substantial attitude. Yeah, because they really are for the irrational. They really believe in that, and they say we believe in that and we want it. The position of European left. Yeah is absolutely incomprehensible, yeah, because they are against capitalism, but for deregulation. What does that mean? Yeah, nobody can understand that. If you are for the deregulation, you are for the radical capitalism. If you are against radical capitalism, you are for the bureaucracy and regulation. That is an option. There's no other options. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, in capitalistic society, things are the way they are because there is not enough money to fashion them differently, you said in your book. Yes. Uh, uh, capitalism needs constantly financial injections, investment, bailouts, and so on mm. to function. All the time is underfinanced. But the same story was in communism, uh, or for that matter in uh, socialism here. Everything was the way it was because it was Underfinanced, the ma the money was lacking. Both systems works. No, 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 no. Come, come on, no. come on. No, come on. no, it's, it's simply not. Socialism was under underfinanced. Capitalism is underfinanced. We are all we, we are con con. Uh, listen. Uh, in no, 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 no. Uh, I, I don't okay. believe. I, I, I will help you. I will help yeah, okay. you. Uh, in, in capitalism, especially now, we are listening to the same rhetoric as in socialism. We'll get there, be patient, please, give us time. We need a little bit austerity, saving, discipline. We're almost there in utopia, in, yeah. in, you know, in paradise. Yeah. The same, the same, the same rhetoric. Yeah, I, be, uh, I, uh, I agree, yeah. It's the same rhetoric, but this rhetoric in capitalism is diminishing. Is diminishing. Socialism remains as it always was, but um, capitalism is changing, and uh, hard-working Americans now have to believe they never ever succeed. Uh -huh. yeah? So the new capitalism is a capitalism in which you have to accept and affirm 
the impossibility of your personal success and the impossibility of social success, you have simply to accept that because it's simply a fact. Yeah? So capitalism operates by facts and by insights based on facts. So it is a fact that it is impossible, so you have to accept that. Socialism never accepts the facts, yeah, absolutely not. For example, uh, I was recently uh, in, um, uh, in uh, it's, it's still socialist in a certain way, it's yeah. a mixed economy, in China and Shanghai. And they uh, convert big, big, big space into a new exhibition space, a new art exhibition space, but they don't have any money to do that, so it's under finance. So what they do, they send army, yeah, they send, mm. they send soldiers, and soldiers build all that without any money. So it's not a problem of money and under financial, it's a problem of political will. If, if you have a political will, you do everything. If you don't have political will, you, 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 yeah, you, 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 you can have so much money, um, you, you, you want, you never do anything. So if, if uh, some, some, all the things are in capitalism as they are, because there is no enough money to change them, yeah? So I describe it like if you look, if you go in a, whatever institution yeah, you go in, and you are brought uh, by a guide yeah, that shows you this institution, and that, well, this institution looks like it looks because we have no money to change it for the better. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So unfortunately, what you see is what you see, because it was how, how much money we got here. And that is explanation. <laughs> and as explanation of socialism is a different. It looks like that because we decided that it has to look like that. Yeah? It's, a different, yeah? it's a different way of arguing. Yeah? For example, if you, look, if you go into Moscow metro, uh, aesthetically it's wonderful, economically it makes no sense. Yeah? It, it was made in this way because it was decided to be made in this way, and that's it. That was right. God's plan. That was God's plan. Yeah. That was God's plan. Revealed yeah. Yeah. in, in yeah. this metro. That, yeah. that, that's why uh, Tea Party and Republicans are against are, are it. So, no, they are against they are so it. logical, so rational. Nee, tea Party never will build, um, would um, uh, create uh, something like a Moscow metro. No. Because they believe in living according to your financial possibilities. Yeah? What is a tea party? Mm -hmm. You have so much money, for so much money, you make so much things. Yeah? And if you do something more, then you go into debt, and to go into debt is immoral. Yeah? But of course, under socialism, there is no debt, there is no money, there is no financial responsibility. People simply decide it will look like that, and they did that. For example, in the Stalin times, they built, you know, this huge uh, Moscow University, yeah, this wonderful skyscraper. Yeah. And after they built this, they realized, that for, for the students, yeah, for the students, the professor, that inside this whole building, there's no one toilet. Yeah. Because they simply never accept the idea that the Soviet people need this kind of things, yeah. So they had to close it and rebuild it to place toilets in it. So you, 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 you have here a very radical decisions beyond any needs, yeah, and beyond any desires. And that's what, um, what is divine about communism. Communism is divine. Yeah, it goes beyond our needs and desires. But it's under, underfinanced. No, 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 it, no yeah, capitalism. It, it, it reminds me yeah, of, of under, capitalism under finance our desires, yeah. and communism goes beyond our yeah, desires. Yeah. <laughs> Effect can be the same, but uh, for our desires, but it's different practices. Yeah, but that reminds me of the Godfather. You've seen Godfather. Oh yes. Oh sure. Okay. When Michael, the youngest son, uh, is saying to his father, "Mafia boss, don't yeah. go on it. Uh, we'll get there, pa." will get their power, will be like U.S. still. We won't be gangsters anymore. Well, come on, capitalism and, you know, and communism always land in that gangster phase. No, no, I don't think so, because 
uh, if there is no laws, there is no gangsters anymore. Yeah, yeah? I mean, capitalism becomes more and more unlawful. So you can. But Corleone family was like a microcosmos of capitalism. Like no, it's a, it's a kind of you. No, no, mafia is a feudal society. Uh, ma mafia is a feudal society of morality and responsibility. I yeah? know it's good. It's, it's, it, it was uh, taken in Sicily and so on, so yeah. uh, and brought in here. So everybody acted rationally, and uh, mafia uh, acted based on on the morals, on the ethics. Yeah? It was yeah. only one mm -hmm. society built on authority and ethics, yeah. And uh, Corleone epos is uh, about how this feudal society is undermined by, uh, by logic of American capitalism and by logic of survival and desire in a capitalist society. So it, it, it is still a story about capitalism undermining feudal structures. But I think what is interesting for us is how we can build new feudal structures inside capitalism, or the communism inside capitalism is the same. There's another interesting thing uh, with Godfather, namely the phrase, I make him an offer he can't refuse. Yeah. The Godfather sounds like adaptation of Marcel Moss's uh, essay yeah, on the yeah. gift. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And it is a pa pagan, uh, uh, it's, it's a world of capitalism. It's a world of uh, uh, pagan religiosity, you know, of uh, ancient Greece yeah. and Rome, yeah. Because God always uh, makes us uh, a proposition, a proposal that we can reject. Yeah, we can say, no, unfortunately, I like devil more. Yeah. I don't like Faust, yeah, he said, oh, no, I, I like devil much more than good, yeah, so I go in different direction. There's always a possibility to go different direction. Of course, you can be punished for that, but there's always a possibility to go in the different direction. Yeah, you are always basically free, yeah, because you always can reject this offer. And the offer that is made by capitalism, you cannot really reject it because it's not a real offer that you can decide about, yeah, it's a fact. Yeah, people say, it's a fact, you make so much money, yeah, it's not somebody propose you, uh, please uh, sell your uh, immortal soul and you get a lot of money for that. Yeah, no, no, yeah. nobody makes this proposition. Yeah, it's not an interaction inside the capitalist order. And so I make so much money as I make with my body. I can never make so, any money with my soul. Yeah, that's the problem. So what you're saying that uh, Faust didn't get that uh, uh, there's no economy beyond the market. There's no economy beyond the market. Faust went to the Christian economy beyond the market and he could uh, earn money selling the soul. It's what actually yeah, yeah. all the artists and philosophers and intellectuals are interested in. Yeah? Yeah. They are interested in selling the money, uh, selling the soul to devil and get some money out of it, yeah? It's, it's, it's a fundamental desire of intellectual class, but it doesn't happen, yeah? Instead, they're working uh, not with the soul, but with the body, yeah? On computer, yeah, yeah getting tired, yeah? Getting uh, poorly paid, yeah? No, no devil, where's the devil, yeah? That's a question, yeah? Yeah, so that's, that's the intellectual artistic question. Yeah, nobody wants my soul. Yeah, everybody but wants my my, my working covers. But since yeah. you're speaking with, since you're speaking about uh, poorly paid uh, workers, uh, all goods made by workers in factories are gifts, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Gifts of those workers that produce them to us. Working worker is paid for his work, as you said, but is not paid for his emotional investment, yeah. for his soul. Uh, for his feelings that he's given to the product. And that welfare state, welfare state, what yeah. you're saying, is compensation for this effort, uh, for this gift, uh, unpaid gift. Yeah. Uh, but now, welfare state is going away. Is yeah. They are dismantling welfare state. Yeah, because people do not believe in the soul. Yeah, Sim simply because of that, yeah. And if you don't believe in the soul, you don't see this investment anymore, yeah? You only see the investment 
uh, by your body and the bodies uh, of the others, and then you pay for that, and there is no investment by the soul. If there's no investment by the soul, there's no Christianity, there's no Christianity, there's no welfare state. Yeah. Welfare state is product of a certain Christian concept of common welfare based on the commonality of souls. Yeah, if there's no commonality of souls, but only difference in the bodies, mm -hmm. and every body is different for every another body, and produce so much as it's capable to produce, then welfare state uh, is obsolete and becomes obsolete. Yeah, it's logical. Yeah, but welfare state was sort of substitute for class war. No, it was substitute for Christianity. It's it's like uh, like for example. A retirement, yeah? A retirement was substitute for the paradise lost, yeah? Instead of going to paradise after death, you get pensions after retirement, yeah? It was a secular, secular compensation. Not very big, but people really loved it, yeah? I, I saw it very funny in the American TV, uh, a kind of protest against capitalism taking place in Rome, and very young uh, girl, yeah, like maybe 16 and 17, was asked what you are protesting for, and she said, I have no future. And she was asked, what, what does she mean? And she said, I, uh, I'll probably get no money after my retirement. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, the future is, is, is a religious formulation. So retirement is paradise, Welfare state is a secularized church, yeah? And of course, uh, it goes down. Yeah. Uh, because we are not believers anymore. Yeah? No, that's Avant-garde artists uh, are and were always in dilemma. Can life become art? Or vice versa, can art become life? Uh, now, many times it happens that art cannot become art anymore. But today, uh, we are even in stranger position uh, when life cannot become life anymore. No. Because the, no, 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 started, no. Yeah, no, yeah, since we're living in the post-historical world, that means that the world itself, itself doesn't exist anymore, only situations, war, catastrophes, terrorist attacks, crisis. Yes, of course, uh, life is basically uh, became art. It will never become life again. I think so, yeah. Yeah, because there is a strong, yeah, that, that's one There's point. no way back. Nice point, nice touch, nice touch, nice touch. But uh, there is a strong resistance to life. Capitalism is showing strong resistance to life. Austerity is the key word and key economic concept. Austerity, restrictions, saving, discipline, reduction, as be ascetic. Well, the point is simply, uh, yeah, let, let, let us even say ontological one, yeah? What is, uh, what is art, yeah? Art is exposure and self-exposure. What art is doing, uh, the artist creates something uh, himself or herself uh, and puts something in, in, into the public space, yeah? It's a question of exposure. Now, if we do assume that we have no soul, so nothing hidden in yeah. us. We have only everything that is exposed, yeah? that the mood of our existence is exposure and self-exposure, what I describe as self-design, design, self-design. And that means that life became, became art. Yeah? We do not have anything else than also only uh, what we expose to the others. Yeah? Our life is only life in the eyes of the others. And, uh, uh, also, contemporary philosophy doesn't believe in the possibility of introspection, yeah? Introspection and uh, self-analysis. Uh, we need the outside eyes, we need the outside gaze, we need the gaze of the other to understand our position in the world, yeah? So, our initial gesture is a gesture of exposure, and that's why uh, we don't have anything, we don't have any life, we only have self-exposure, and that means we only, only have uh, art, yeah. 
Uh, but this is precisely a rhetoric we know from socialism, austerity, restriction, saving, discipline, reduction, asceticism. But I, I won't go into that. Okay. Uh, uh, but that brings us to modern art, to the avant-garde, which is often characterized as a series of broken taboos, of ex expansion, of this possibility of making an art. Uh, but you're saying that it's, it was actually quite opposite. Uh, avant-garde was always ascetic. Casimir Malevich, black square. Every kind of avant-garde was always ascetic, yeah. Duchamp, ready-made. Everything, everything. Uh, art was, uh, uh, avant-garde art was uh, directed against seduction, against self-expression, against uh, perf perfection of form, yeah, it was always reduction, 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 reduction. Yeah. Always about ascetic attitude and reduction. So always Sacrificing? Uh, simply reducing, yeah. Even reducing without maybe sacrificing, yeah. yeah it's, it's pure reduction. Were they sacrificed anything? Because the question was always, did they actually know how to paint, to draw a horse? Did they have artistic skills? Did they actually knew tradition they were throwing away? Or were just they faking, you know, simulating and just sacrificing? to put in Hegelian terminology something they actually didn't have? Uh, it's an ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice is the sacrifice of sacrifice. Yeah? So the ultimate sacrifice is self-presentation as malin genie, as a manipulator, and it's actually, uh, I think, uh, contemporary art and modern art became so popular because it became popular. It became so popular because everybody believed that contemporary art simply deceives public. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're tricksters, uh, frauds. They are tricksters, yeah. No yeah. And people are interested in tricksters, yeah. They don't interested in genies, yeah, because they are not genies, yeah. But this is the but same reason why capitalism is so successful. It's part of the system. But it's 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 a certain no, kind no, no. Of, it's a certain kind of interpretation. Yeah, you, you know what, uh, what was the eye-opener for me? Uh, some uh, years ago, I came to a very advanced exhibition in uh, uh, Köln. It was behind. It was only some kind of dust on the floor. Yeah, that was the whole exhibition. And um, I, had, I, had, uh, I had to give a speech here, yeah, the opening speech. And I had a very heavy luggage here. Yeah, should I ask the taxi driver to bring that uh, into the space? And he looked at that and asked him, did you like it? Uh, what is your appreciation of that? And he said, well, we're going through the very, very hard times, and artists also have to survive. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that is this kind of, you know, initial, very basic and very fast identification with this trickster role, yeah? Because everybody believes you have to be a trickster, you have to manipulate, you have to deceive to survive, yeah? So if artists do that in an in efficient manner, everybody is happy with that. That's why we are so fascinated by Wall Street. Uh, Absolutely, yes, charlatans. yes, that's yes, it. yes, that's it. that's it, yeah. With financial products, we don't yeah. understand, but... Yeah, people love... They're people. tricky. Yeah, people love these people because they think they are idiots, yeah? but manipulative and tricky. Yeah. It's, it's like this Wall Street movie. Yeah. And because they are idiots, everybody can, can be like them. Yeah. It's difficult to be a saint, it's difficult to be uh, a genius, but everybody understands it's not very difficult to be a trickster on the, the stock exchange. Yeah. You, have, you have to be, yeah, you have to uh, have the right connections, to get some money for the right education, and then you do it. Yeah. I mean, so, so it's, it's, a, it's a very seductive perspective. Yeah, so me. we are saying basically that uh, we are all living in an avant-garde artwork. Austerity, asceticism, point zero, the end of history, uh, manipulations. Yes, that's what I try to uh, discuss in, uh, in uh, this book, uh, Under Suspicion, that uh, recently yeah. was published uh, in, in Slovenia, that our attitude to the outside world and to ourselves, actually, too, is an attitude of distrust and suspicion. Yeah, and it's 
actual ontology and theology of our time. Yeah? Uh, if I may go back to the medieval period of our intellectual history, in the medieval period, we had a combination between nature, it's what we see, mm -hmm. and theology, yeah? it, uh, uh, kind of imagination of divine powers behind it. Yeah? And today, uh, it's a combination between a media space or media surface and conspiracy theory. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory is a theology of our time. Whatever we look at, we think there is some conspiracy behind it. Yeah. Yeah? And it's precisely this kind of already return uh, to the medieval age. It's a return to the suspicion something is behind it. Actually, um, Enlightenment didn't believe in that. Enlightenment didn't believe in hidden conspiracies, and they are despised people believing in hidden conspiracies. But I think today everybody believes that behind whatever one sees, there is a kind of conspiracy and manipulation. And you can and you should uh, look through the things. Yeah, it's 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 a, 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 a very theological, ontological attitude, not to look what people show you look through the things, what they actually want from you, how they want to deceive you, how want they exploit you, how they want to use you. Yeah, that's a general attitude yeah, of our time. And I think it's very religious and theological attitude indeed. Yeah? Because the people, people never see what they actually see. Yeah? They see through. Yeah, but there is more than meets the eye in uh, all that. I mean, uh, it's not just that we want to see what is behind. We want to be misled. We want to be manipulated. Uh, we want remember, to be manipulated remember, remember, because we want to manipulate. Okay, just remember, just, just remember the, the movies by David Mamet, yeah. uh, Spanish prisoner, House of Games. They showing her that they're manipulating her, and she wants more. She wants more because. Because we and she's psychoanalyst. Yeah, because we first of all we enjoy this looking through. Yeah, because w w what we actually uh, we are not. W what does it mean psychologically and ontologically? What does it mean looking through things? It is uh, looking at our own imagination instead of the real world. So that means nobody is interested in the real world and the things that they are. Everybody is interested only in one's own imagination. And so you are interested in your own imagination, what you project behind the surface of the things. Mm -hmm. And you have also, you want also to be mysterious. Everybody wants to be mysterious, yeah? Everyone wants to be uh, inscrutable. Every, yeah, you, know, you have this kind of disposition in our civilization. Which, which is very funny indeed, yeah, if you look at that from a kind of phenomenological perspective. Yeah. yeah, but basically we want to be misled, manipulated, and those, all those frauds, fraudsters, fraudsters and uh, tricksters and manipulators in uh, David Mamet's movies, they're called con artists. Yeah, con artists, yeah. Artists. Yeah, con this artists. Yeah, that, uh, of course, uh, for, for the general public, every artist is a con artist. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite clear. But it's no uh, question about that. Crime fiction is a big deal now. Why crime novels are dominant genre in modern culture? They're, they're everywhere. You know, every country is, a, you know, like big on crime novels now. From Scandinavia to Russia to Italy, Spain, states, wherever. All the people are writing crime novels, all the others are reading them. Yeah, of course, because, uh, first of all, because uh, we live, as I said, in an uh, in age of suspicion and distrust. Yeah. And, of course, crime fiction uh, reacts to that. Yeah? And uh, also because in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the crime fiction, there's no life but only art, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you look at somebody, you ask why he behaves like he behaves, yeah? 
that means you don't uh, accept everyday life as it is, at the face value. You think you are deceived, you are misled, there is something behind it. it and also, interesting that uh, private eye always uh, acts as a contemporary artist. Yeah, contemporary artists are basically interested in garbage. Yeah, yeah. if you look at most, most general, yeah, so it's garbage. Yeah, from from uh, Andy Warhol, yeah, who used all these packages and so on. It's all garbage. Yeah, and what uh, actually Private Eye does, yeah, coming into the space, he goes to the garbage can. Yeah, he goes to the garbage can because the garbage of everyday life is a place where the secrets reveal themselves. Yeah? You have this, the same attitude. Yeah, we live in a civilization that is dominated by the same attitude of all its levels. Mm. Yeah? So the attitude of the crime, uh, private eye, is distrust, uh, deception, uh, uh, and disbelief in the reality of everyday life. Yeah. But all those detectives are dealing with perfect crimes that looks like uh, Gesamt Kunstwerk. Kunstwerk, just remember uh, Seven, Sin Seven movie. The yeah, crimes there are like, you know, like art, like Gesamt Kunstwerk. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, but also, actually, you, you have more and more, uh, it began with uh, Nouveau Roman, uh, you have more and more novels where you are confronted with something like objective crime. Yeah. yeah? So it's not something is planned, yeah, but something happened. And I have to find out what has happened. It's, it, it was not planned. And so it's very difficult to, to find out what it was. Yeah. If it was. If it was, yes. And if it was at all. Yeah, yeah like so, wire. Like yeah, 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 for example. Yeah, yeah. And legum. Yeah, yeah, yeah legum. So, uh, to or other blow up. Yeah, and blo yeah, too, yeah. So you have this kind of a second degree and third degree of reflection. And at the end, uh, you, 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 you kind of, yeah, like Legom, yeah, uh, Rob Grier, you turn the suspicion against yourself and you, you actually begin to assume that you invented this plot, yeah, mm -hmm. at the end. So, so it was your crime, yeah, if you want. Uh, how come suspicion is more convincing than fact? Yeah, because, uh, because if everything is artificial, if everything is made up, if everything is produced, and we'll, uh, we live in a situation in which there is no natural anymore, yeah? The only natural is uh, our ecological uh, products that are more expensive than normal products. Yeah. And we ask ourselves um, how they are manipulated. Yeah, uh, so and and capitalism is natural. And the capitalism is God's plan. Come on. Yeah, yeah, but God's plan. It's but natural. God is also an artist. Yeah, it's not nature. So you, you, you have this kind of theology. No. So you have this kind of uh, complete artificiality. And if you have a, a feeling of artificiality then you always assume somebody behind this, yeah, behind the show, behind the curtain, yeah, operating yeah, in, in the darkness. Uh, you, 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 you don't have this kind of suspicion only if you believe in nature, but uh, you don't believe in nature today. Yeah? Nature is for us uh, environment. Yeah? L look, if you, so the language itself, yeah, it's, it's very important. We say, we have to protect our environment. What does it mean? Traditionally, society protected itself from the environment. Yeah. Yeah? The idea to protect environment means that there's no environment. Yeah. The concept of protecting nature means that there's no nature. Yeah? Everything became artificial. And if everything became artificial, then everything became suspicious. Yeah, but the suspicion is becoming economy. What's the point of making an art that is not misleading? Yeah, because uh, uh, art, uh, as our media and so is, uh, as I try to show here, is a trust production, and you can produce trust. You can produce trust in our society if you confirm all the suspicions. But we can, yeah, we can trust only suspicion. Yeah? Yes, and if you confirm all the suspicions and to say, 
that things are as bad as you assume them to be yeah. and actually much worse, then the people believe you. Yeah? For example, uh, people like, uh, like Jeff Koons, yeah? who, who is more, most a successful commercial artist. Uh, Jeff Koons, uh, and what, what he actually says, he said, I am much more cynical yeah, than you ever imagined me yeah. to be. Yeah? I am much more manipulative than you think I am. Yeah? And this kind of strategy of confirming the worst uh, assumptions, that is what made him successful, yeah? as many other commercial artists of our time. If you, if you say you are honest, you, are, you cannot sell really well. Yeah? Mm. You can be respected by your friends, but you don't have commercial success. Yeah, but if, if we are living in culture of suspicion and we want desperately to see what's behind, uh, what is our relationship to that thing behind, economic or political? Uh, well, it's, uh, we, we can choose. Why? We can choose. But if it's, if it's behind, if it's suspicious, if it's dangerous, that means it's dangerous. It's uh, threatening our lives. Uh, then it's political relationship. We can argue with it. We can criticize it. We can protest. Uh, not, ne not, not necessarily. It, the question is, so our reaction to this suspicion, to this suspicious power yeah. behind things, is to identify it ourselves with it, to, be, to begin so powerful yeah. as this power is. Yeah. But uh, to, to become so powerful, we can uh, understand that in different ways. We can understand that as being as uh, 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 going to the stock exchange and may, may making billions here, yeah, we can go yeah. there. We can think we go into politics and and making something different. So the way in which we want to identify ourselves with these hidden powers to be as conspiratorial as the world itself. Yeah. So what people actually want, they want to be as suspicious and conspiratorial as the world it's, mm. as the world itself. And but. But the way of reaching that and the way of identification, you can choose it. You have a certain freedom of choice. But the choice is economic. No, it can be also political. It can be, it can be also political, it can be economic. Yeah, be but when we are, when we are uh, saying we are suspicious, we are in culture of suspicion, uh, we are basically saying there is too much truth. Uh, producing truth is obviously easy, consuming truth is hard, <laughs> to say the least. No, producing truth, and I, I think people don't produce truth now, yeah, they produce facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. They produce facts, for example, they show you ecological uh, products and they say they don't have uh, this, this and that components, everything is written in Latin language, nobody understands what it is. Well, if it's not trained it's chemically, so, on. so they present some facts, and they present that facts that they do not understand, we do not understand, and they are not understandable by definition. Yeah. Okay, because nobody knows what percent is good, what percent is bad, so it's, it's, it's completely nonsense. Yeah. yeah. So you go behind it, you say they manipulate me, so let me manipulate them. Yeah. So it's, it's how how it works. Yeah, but truth is economic category, truth is truth if it has commercial value, obviously, yeah. but truth with com commercial value is suspicious. So we are a commercial value is vicious a, a, circle. Yeah. No, it's not a vicious circle because uh, the production of truth decreases, so nobody tells us any truth, but what is actually increases, it's not production of truth, but it's production of insights and what, what I say is call for action, yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So people say, lose your weight, yeah, make fitness, yeah. yeah? It's not truth, yeah? It's, it's kind of command, do that, yeah. and do that now, yeah? You know, if you live also in America, as I do, uh, it's 
Na? I speak about socialism mm -hmm. here. So every moment here I see this advertisement, fitness program, this, this, or that, or mental training, yeah, so, and that. So you need it. Call now. Don't wait. Call now. So what they uh, uh, actually offers us is opening to action. Yeah, and we are living in a situation in which everybody acts and nobody thinks. Yeah, mm. we. Uh, uh, yeah, we began with this uh, concept of Gidebor, of societal spectacle, mm. but societal spectacle disappeared simply because there is no spectator. Yeah, after Gidebor committed suicide, there is no spectator anymore alive. Yeah, because we don't speak, we don't listen, and we don't look. Instead, we are speaking and show ourselves. Everybody is on stage. Nobody looks at that. Nobody reads anything. Everybody's posting in the Facebook and on the Twitter. Nobody goes and walks. Everybody makes fitness and training or jogging yeah, and things like that. So we are in a society of total action where uh, any kind of delay, any kind of concentration, any kind of uh, contemplation, any kind of thinking is excluded from the beginning, from the start. Something is not there. And so uh, truth understood as something that should be contemplated or thought about is simply uh, is not offered by us because we are too busy. We have no time. Yeah, but on the other side, our suspiciousness is yeah. the only sign of our life. Uh, this is the only sign that we're still alive. I mean, the, the only proof of our freedom in a way. Yeah, we it's are suspicious, you see, we are alive. Absolutely. We, I, I agree that after life became uh, art, yeah, life itself remained as a suspicion. So we assume that he may be really alive. You know, mm, uh, already Kozhev and Derrida speaks a lot about that. Uh, every kind of creation, every kind of writing, yeah, is uh, is a suicide action, yeah? yeah? If I write a book, I, I am dead, yeah, because people who are reading this book, they are basically not interested in um, uh, my being alive or my being dead. Yeah, basically, if you read Derrida, uh, he agrees with uh, Plata that after somebody, yeah, brought uh, his book uh, into the uh, in, uh, on, on the market, he kind of died because he's not uh, the object of interest anymore. So that was before, but it's not now, because everybody says, "Yeah, book is there, but the marketing strategy, <laughs> the marketing strategy survives." So the marketing strategy survives every suicide. Mm. Yeah, you made a book, as also you are dead. But as marketing strategist, you are still alive, and people hate you for that, yeah? And you are suspicious for that, that you survived your book, yeah? You survived your um, artwork, and so on and so on. So we live in this uh, society where to be alive is really to be suspicious. So if you are suspicious, it indicates that people think maybe you are really living. Yeah, but if you are suspicious, uh, that means that you're also a little bit dead. Yes, yeah, so that we are dead is obvious. Or undead. <laughs> or undead. 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 A undead. little bit zombie. Absolutely. Yeah. So everybody looks like dead, yeah, according and doing certain program like a zombie. But we think maybe, maybe the guy actually only looks like zombie, but is actually alive, yeah. yeah. Maybe he has a very strange strategy behind it. So if you look at them, it's absolutely zombie. Huh? No, it's, Clear, like, yeah? it's like in conspiracy, conspiracy yeah, theories, you yeah. know, conspiracy theory, you know, every conspiracy theory, 80% uh, is truth, but we never know which 80%, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But, but, but it's nice, yeah. So it's the greatest compliment, yeah, <laughs> that we can make to, some, uh, to somebody that he's maybe actually only trickster, not like zombie, uh, as we see here.
So you are ready to admit that the model for avant-garde art, art was always capitalism? No, of course not. <laughs> come on. No, ever. Come on, capitalism no, ever. Is, no, 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 come on. Capitalism is getting rid of everything old that is not prof profitable, like avant-garde art. Uh, avant-garde artist is looking always in the future, like every capitalist, like every manager. Yes, of course. Yeah, but okay. it's one, no, no, no. It's one reading of the avant-garde. You can read the avant-garde practice as a trickster practice, yeah, and, and, and that's how we read it. We can read also avant-garde as a practice of stagnation, asceticism, uh, end of growth, and end of capitalism, end of desire, end of consumption, and then it's opened the way to socialism. And that is how uh, I described it in Stalin. As I said, you have a certain strategy, and the question is how you read it, and you have a choice to read it. Yeah, there is no yeah, there is no dictate. The, the strategy itself does not dictate your an unavoidable interpretation. The interpretation is always open, it's always your interpretation. It's your subjective interpretation, your subjective suspicion. And it's always possible to read avant-garde as, as consistent, yeah, as, as consistent to read avant-garde as the opening of the socialist order of return to asceticism and suppression of desire. And it can also be read as, as a kind of uh, commercial manipulation, where actually Askesis itself, yeah, becomes an object of desire. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a classical, that's a classical critique of the avant-garde from the capitalist point of view. That here, the ascetic consumption, the asceticism itself, can be interpreted as a specific kind of a consumption. And being a top of a specific kind of consumption, it can be interpreted also as being part of a capitalist system of manipulating desire. Uh, but you can read it th this way, you can read it that way. It's your decision after all, yeah? You know, things are not as they are, yeah? I think what, what is very important is that interpreting the things, you make a choice, this choice is always a political choice, and you can make this choice in one direction, you can make this choice in another direction. We are free in that. But when you're seeing capitalists accumulate all that money, it looks like he's uh, accumulating that money for not yet born people, for not yet born public. He's functioning like an uh, avant-garde artist. He's always, avant-garde artist always making art for not yet born public, for not yet born viewers. Yes, of course, but... He's uh, trying to guess the taste of the future. I agree. But capitalism creates not money, it creates debt. Yeah, yeah? okay, right. So, capitalism growing debt, debt, debt. So what, what capitalism gives to us is debt, yeah. And the question is of interpretation. How we interpret this debt? One possibility is to go further and accumulate this debt further and further, mm. and that is this uh, Benjamin's way. And the other, other possibility is to reject this debt and it is a socialist way, an ascetic way, and all of that. So, so, you know, it's always a problem of interpretation. There is no necessity in all of that. Yeah, and positive reaction to avant-garde art is always bad news for avant-garde. Uh, they want negative reaction. And, uh, I don't know. I know some people who are avant-garde, they yeah, like to be praised. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's risky because, no, 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 no. Positive, <laughs> positive reactions are risky because they mean that uh, your art maybe not, will not be alive in the future. No, no, it I not don't. Be, it, it, not, it will not be cool, up to date in the future. No, I don't think so. I think that um, many people think that avant-garde art is provocative. And so if it's not provocative, it's not avant-garde. But avant-garde is not provocative at all, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not provocative. It maybe provokes some people, but it's not provocative uh, essentially. Avant-garde art, as I said, is the uh, art of uh, reduction. 
it's a question of what is basically artwork, what is basically artist, yeah? It's kind of a reduction to the basics, yeah? This reduction to the basics can be provocative for some people, but not provocative for other people. I was, for example, always interested in avant-garde art or wrote about that. I was never provoked by it, yeah? I never felt myself be provoked, yeah? I felt myself rather uh, to be instructed and uh, to be interested, but never provoked. Don't you think that the real museum would be a museum of negative reactions to the art? I think there, will be, be, I think there will be no... That would be the true avant-garde museum. There will be no museum. The whole system collapse. Because, yeah. like, history of capitalism is history of negative reaction, reactions to... Uh, no, it's a, it's a history of collapse of culture, uh, yeah. to and also, also not only culture will collapse, but also critique of culture will collapse, but there is no museum, everything will collapse. But there is no museum of capitalism, there is museum of communism, but there is no cap museum Yes, of, of course, capitalism. yeah, because uh, uh, muse uh, museum is, uh, has a claim to transcend change and transcend individual desire, and communism also has this claim to transcend change and desire. And so there can be a museum of communism, but it can be a museum of capitalism. Capitalism is a huge machine of destruction of memory, of forgetting. Yeah, what, what, um, uh, what capitalism is interested in is that you forget and you forget fast. Yeah, because yeah, if only if you forget fast... A museum fast, is quite opposite. It's exactly and, opposite. And museum is basically opposite. And that means that museum, under the condition of capitalism, museum has no future. Museum will be just... Uh, removed here yeah, and, 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 and collapse uh, and, uh, and wait here. Yeah, in a couple of uh, years, they say we have no money for museums. There, there will be no money for museums. There will be no one dollar in Europe for any kind of cultural memory. It will simply be destroyed and will be destroyed completely. So if, if you are the capitalist system, then you have the system that base, is based on the negation of memory. It's based on the negation of immortality, it's based on the negation of survival, and based on the negation of everything that is, goes beyond individual desire. And that means there's a culture of forgetting, because only if you forget that you already had it, it can be sold to you second time. Yeah? And that is precisely what capitalism does. He sells us always the same, and he sells us always the same uh, because we forget, structurally forget, that we already had it. Yeah. But if museum is quite opposite of uh, capitalism... Then it has no future. Yeah, but... Uh, Under capitalism. But museums are not what they used to be, uh, according to you. Uh, that you're saying that in our epoch, museums are not standing at the end of history, but at the beginning of history. Uh, yeah, the art must, must first succeed in museum, and then it can go in and reality. Under certain presuppositions, under the presuppositions that I described in this text. So, Museum is associated with a traditional museum. Mm. It's associated with the concept of permanent collection. Yeah. Yeah. There's almost no museums today with permanent collections. So museums is exhibition spaces for temporary exhibitions. That means actually for events. Yeah. So the museum is place, museum contemporary art, modern art, is like biennial and many other art forms, is a space for artistic events. And in this sense, uh, these artistic events really start the history. Yeah? They start the history of their uh, commenting, interpreting, and so on and so on. They are not at the end. It's not like somebody decides they were good or bad and includes them mm -hmm. in a permanent collection or maybe negative or whatever. Nobody knows what it is. People just do it, just try to organize some event uh, nobody takes that very seriously because the event is short, yeah, maybe a couple of days, maybe four months. And then we begin to look at that if it is interesting or not, and then we forget that and we are ready for the next event. Right? So there's no permanent collections, there's no memory, 
there's no uh, historical narrative. All that is already liquidated by the further development of capitalism. It's already out. It's already discarded. Right. Memory is crushed, yeah. And memory is crushed also because you have Google and Internet, and Google Internet is our memory. So instead, instead of remember we Google, yeah, and when we Google, we bring profit to the Google company. So it's a completely different operation. Yeah? It's not anamnesis in platonic sense of this world. It's simply collaboration in uh, financial success of Google. That's it. Yeah. They just turned off the internet and we are without memory. We are amnesiac. Then we begin to remember again. Yeah. <laughs> but it never happens. All our memory is gone with the wind. All memory the is a memory stick. Yeah. Memory is a memory, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> why we are saving in museum the painting of the cow, not the cow itself? Uh, well, because... Uh, Since we are, you know, speaking about museum. Uh, uh, because Society uh, for Protection of Animals uh, do not allow to bring skulls in the museum, you know. Uh, people try to, time and again to do so. Yeah. And it always ends with processes against exploitation of cows. It's interesting that if you go in the museum as a human being, you are not exploited. That, that you are, be, that, but that <laughs> you are nobody is against it. it. It's ready made. <laughs> yes, of course, yeah. A, a lot of artists try to do so, and they ended with processes. No, 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 they were, you know, like, Sewing no, them, no, sewing them, no, yeah. not okay. at all, not at all. So it's okay, but real cow, yeah, because real cows they tried it. They tried it with all kinds of animals. It never succeeded. They, it maybe succeeded a couple of times with naked humans, yeah, okay, because humans are not protected by law. But animals are protected by law, and you cannot put cow in that kind of unfriendly environment. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. simply forbidden. Yeah. So if it will be removed, if the law will be removed, you will see uh, a mass of cows in museums. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, why were Russians so ready, so well equipped, equipped for avant-garde art? Why were they so ready to change their life completely, totally ready to accept new, not yet known forms of life experiments? Oh, they were not so unique in that, yeah, because you have uh, the same drive uh, in Holland yeah. with the style, maybe later, but still uh, with Bauhaus, uh, with Futurism. But, you know, with Russians, uh, you, you have this uh, change in the social system itself, yeah. So the social system changed in such a radical way that the avant-garde was not absorbed by the social media. Yeah? And, uh, if you look at the development of Western civilization at the beginning of the 20th century, all the avant-garde movement were absorbed by very stable social milieus. And Russian uh, milieus, cultural milieus were crushed. They didn't exist. Uh, they were removed from power. So uh, the avant-garde went further and further, further and further, yeah, and, uh, and that was uh, maybe a, a, a chance, yeah, that was a chance, yeah, it's difficult to say uh, was it, uh, a happy chance or unhappy chance, but that was a chance. But uh, in the way, the same way they were ready and equipped for avant-garde art, they were equipped and ready for communism, revolution, Stalin. Not the same people. Hmm? Not the same. Not people. the same people. Not the same people. You have, you have, you know, two different trajectories at the same time. One trajectory is uh, artistic revolution and change of life, and the other trajectory is Marxist transformation of society. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at the history of these two trajectories. They collaborated for some time, also in France, yeah. It's very interesting to read, for example, a uh, text by Breton, yeah, how he describes this tension between these two projects. And they collaborated for a very long time in Russia, but they were not identical. 
And so between the cons Marxist concept of total uh, transformation of society and uh, uh, avant-garde project of total uh, change of life, there are some certain homologies, but there are certain tensions and contradictions that do not coincide completely. I would say that the strength of Russian avant-garde was that they coincided in Russia for a longer time as in any other place in Europe but still not 100% and we know consequences of that. But in uh, your book, your famous book, uh, Gesamtkunstwerk Stalin, you said that Stalin's totalitarian regime was just a realization of uh, avant-garde dream? Precisely. That went up to maybe 30s beginning yeah. of the surface, yeah, in that period that I described, the middle of surface, 34, 35, 36, yeah. But after this period, uh, you don't have uh, also in, inside Stalinist regime any utopian dream, any energy of construction, yeah, you have uh, a growing stagnation, growing folkloristic tendencies, and so on and so on. So I end my book um, at the middle of the 30s, well, social realism was still a kind of progressive uh, energetic force. Mm -hmm. uh, but after a certain period of time, it ceased to be so. Yeah? And so you have this uh, long period of uh, conformity without any uh, real drive. Uh, inside the Stalinist regime itself, and especially after the death of Stalin. Uh, avant-garde artists uh, totally identify with the Stalin's project in a way, with his regime, with his power, with power. Uh, and that concept of identification was uh, in a way key to Russian avant-garde and that epoch and that concept of identification uh, flew over to the West via Stanislavski and his method coming to Hollywood to Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando was modern man, the man who changed West. Uh, since Marlon Brando, everybody is talking like Marlon Brando, behaving like Marlon Brando, loving like, uh, emotionalizing like Marlon Brando. Uh, you know, street car, street car name design was directed by ex-communist who later spilled beans on his comrades, you know, uh, former... Yeah, yeah, I know, the, I know the story. You know, the point is that there, is, there are two different logics, yeah, again, yeah, one logic is... But it's funny that, you know, that this I know, concept no. of investigation... I, I, I go back to that, yeah. I go back to that. So if you speak about identification, there are two different kinds of identification. One is identification through certain logic of artistic practice, and the other identification is a personal identification. Yeah. If you look at the histories, individual histories, biographies of Russian avant-garde, this identification was far from being 100%. Malevich was distancing himself already at the end of the 20s. Tatlin was distancing himself already beginning of the 30s. But then other people took the leading roles, like Rodchenko, like Klutzes, and so on and so on, Arvatev, yeah, so, so there's a certain line of development, I described this line, but this line of development doesn't mean that everyone in the Russian Amagat followed this line, yeah? So individual strategies, individual stories are always much more complicated than the logic of, um, uh, logic of development, and the same can be said about the West, yeah, you have a very different strategies of uh, taking influence from the East, yeah. You have Sartre and his kind of communist engagement. You have Marlon Brando with completely different kind of engagement or non-engagement or realistic attitude or critical attitude. So you have Breton, yeah, I already mentioned that. You have this and that. So you have... Um, uh, different strategies of adaptation and interpretation. I said at the beginning, I don't believe that there is kind of um, 
logic in the individual interpretation. Individual interpretation remains always free to a certain extent. And there is a certain kind of um, social logic, certain kind of artistic logic, but that doesn't mean that individual artists always follow this logic. Yeah, they kind of go different directions. Yeah, uh, but this concept of identification is very important for capitalism. We have all those, you know, how to books, how to perform better, how to be more effective, how to be more competitive. Uh, in a way, uh, in capitalism, people are living as if they live in Gesamtkunstwerk of Italian uh, future futurist, futurists, uh, you know, every day, every day war, you know, every day is war. Uh, oh, so yes, 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 yes. I, I know what you mean. Uh, I also thought about that. The point is that what we actually want to do, and Marx already described that, is to be like money. I think that, yeah, because the real power behind capitalism is money. Everybody wants to be like money, not operating by money, but become money. like money, becomes to be money. Unfortunately, human beings simply cannot do that. They try yeah, to be absolutely flexible. They try to be absolutely cynical. They try to be convertible and everything and so on. They try hard. They never succeed, unfortunately, or fortunately, simply because they are finite mortal. They are kind of, you know, they are not this machine of desires as Deleuze describes them. They want to drink yeah. tea, they are tired, they want to sleep, and money never sleep. Yeah, you yeah, know, sleep. money never sleep, and we sleep, yeah. That is a big difference, and that's why, why we cannot become like money. We sleep, yeah. We are, we are relaxed, yeah. We are, we dream, yeah, you know, we are, we are not very good in that, yeah. And that's why we are always frustrated by capitalism. We can maybe want and not want to be like Stalin, yeah, but basically it is possible. Yeah? You can become like Stalin, but you cannot become like money, yeah. It's, it's really impossible. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not, not desirable, but it's impossible. You are frustrated. That's why people are frustrated. People in capitalism are always ontologically frustrated. Yeah, but in a way, if, if, new, if new Stalin comes, uh, if communism comes... Uh, Let's see what happens. No, 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 capitalism is ready. Capitalism is well equipped uh, for living in communism, under communism. We, let's see. <laughs> we don't know that. Is there a... <laughs> capitalistic Gesamtkunstwerk. Andy Warhol was trying no. in that way. Come on. Business is art, art is business. No, 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 never, 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 no? No, 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 no. Because not in the sense in which... Uh, I will write here, no. Not in the sense in which um, we understand art. We understand art still not in terms of complete artificiality. Complete artificiality is possible, yeah, this is what we know there. But art as something transcending time. And of course, Warhol also believes that his uh, art transcends time. Yeah, no question about that. Whatever he says, he believes in that. Otherwise, he would not produce all this stuff here. Yeah, yeah well, he was, he was like a soldier, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, you, you produce that because you think you survive your time, yeah, it's a kind of dream of immortality, um, uh, life after death. Uh, it's, it's all impossible under capitalism, yeah, you can't believe that. So you can't be an artist in the traditional sense of this world because, because you can't believe that under conditional capitalism. But there's a problem, Stalin had to fail and to die in order to be grasped as yeah, a yeah, yeah. Kunstwerk. Yes. What about capitalism? It's constantly failing. Oh yes, if it fails completely, then it will be finished. The problem, the problem with capitalism, it cannot be aestheticized because it's unfinished. Yeah. If it will be finished, we will we begin to love it. Yeah, that's no uh, question. As Zizek would say, uh, it always fails uh, better. Yeah, but as as it's far failing better and better, you know, like uh, uh, communist revolutions should. But as far as it happens, yeah, we don't like it. Yeah, because we d we don't fail better. Yeah, I you know the. The point is not, yeah, we have our own attitude. Yeah, if we speak about philosophy, if we speak about capitalism, the 
basic question is how we feel, how we behave, yeah. We have to go back to our own situation, yeah? Not to be too abstract, yeah? So if we want to always fail successfully, we, it doesn't happen. We fail also unsuccessfully, yeah? Zizek, I don't know, maybe he fails successfully, yeah. but other people not, yeah? Then uh, we sleep, yeah? We, we are ill, yeah? We die. We do all the things that capitalism doesn't, yeah? It's not able to do. So we are in a different situation than money and capitalism, but we are in the same situation as Christianity and communism because Christ also died, as we know. And nobody was protected. Communism, didn't, yeah. Nobody didn't protest. Nobody no, was nobody protesting at the time. When we die also, nobody protested. Even Plato wasn't protesting when they were executing... Uh, Socrates, uh, nobody protested. Yeah. No. No yeah. protest. Yeah, when we die also nobody protests. Every, says... I, it, was, it was God's plan, come on. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Sure. So, uh, so uh, as communism died, we began to be interested in it. The ability to die is very important. As long as yeah, you but say... you need good war, you need good war. No, All, all no. wars of last 60, 70 years are bad. No, no, war only rejuvenates the world. Yeah, we know. Oh. We all read uh, uh, Marinetti. Uh, yeah, it, GDP it, it, goes up. It's a revitalization. Yeah, yeah. No, no, End no. End of austerity. No, not to die, not to make a war, but to go sleep, yeah? yeah. To wake up next day, no stock exchange, <laughs> nothing yeah. like well, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ask why? Because also money sleeps, yeah? I always waiting for the moment that somebody tells me money also sleeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, well, money also sleeps. Stock exchange. What is the official art of Wall Street? No art. Yeah, come on, but them Yorks from Wall Street are having all the rights Stalin had. No. They have the same rights, yeah. No, no, absolutely not. They have the same power, come on. No, Stalin followed his own will and Wall Street follows money, yeah? We, we, des we decided that there's two different models. One is irrational, other is rational. And Stalin followed rational model, and Wall Street follows irrational model. It's two, two different kinds of religion. One is post-Christian, Einstein was trained as a Christian priest, yeah? And other is pagan, yeah? We are living under the paganism. Yeah, we have to ask, accept that, it's not bad. Uh, yeah, people also lived under paganism before, yeah. But it's like it is. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we're almost at the end. Uh, <laughs> uh, Avant-garde artists are perceived as artists, as people who are willing to die for their call, for their art. Now, in contem contemporary world, funny thing is, the only people that, that are willing to die for their cause are, are Islamic terrorists. The, the last people who want to die for their cause. The I, I, I don't know if, uh, if contemporary artists want to die or modern but artists want to are. die. If you look I'm around, not sure about it. And, I'm uh, not sure about and, that. And, and Buddhist monks in, 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 in Tibet? No, Buddhist monks not. Come on, they Christians. are self-immolating. Christians. They are self-immolating? Christians, Christians, Christians. Christians won't die. Yeah, good, yeah. They are still religious, yeah. What's bad about that? Yeah. I think yeah. it's okay. Ah, okay. After Stalin died, this is the last one probably, uh, Soviet Union that was living in post-history, in communism, communism was out of history. Yeah wanted under Khrushchev uh, back into history. But they suddenly found out that history doesn't exist anymore. So they, yeah. fall, they fell in prehistory. Can something like that happen to capitalism? Capitalism is already, uh, as I said, it's already a huge step back. Uh, toward the Roman Empire. Yeah, Roman law is actually 
Bürgerliches Gesetz. Mm. Yeah. So, so we were living under the pagan civilization, late Roman belief in many gods, one fate, uh, re total irrationality and accidentality of life. We are living in a time before Christianity, so it's already kind of a return. Yeah? What, 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 what is history? History is always history of revivals and returns. Yeah? French Revolution was a return to Roman Empire. Uh, communism was returned to Christianity. So you, you, you have all these revivals and returns. I don't know what kind of next revival uh, awaits us. Yeah? No, nobody we, knows. You're saying we, 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 we are not inventors of the end of history. No, never. Far from it. No, no. This, yeah, because the end of history was at the beginning of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the history ended at the moment it began. Yeah. And then we go back to that and back to that and back to that. And so everything is repetition. Everything is return. A revolution is a return. It's a revolution. Yeah. Yeah. So we live through return revivals and revolutions, and we have never changed. Yeah. So what you're suggesting that we should go to to rock concert. <coughs> but then again or to rock, sleep. But then again rock concerts are extensions of uh, what? Hitler's or Stalin's aesthetics? Hitler's. Hitler's. Okay, we won't go into that because this is another hour and a half. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's a Hitler's aesthetic. <laughs> Boris Groys. <laughs>